it has been eaten micro SD cards like nobody's business. So out with the old, in with the new. All right, party people, welcome back. Ooh, look at that, she clean. This was my dash cam for the longest time. This is the Z Edge dash cam. And a couple things I really liked about it at the time when I purchased this camera, it did a 1080p 60 frames per second, which is what I record all my videos in. So it was a good option for me. One of the things I really liked about this particular camera is it had the standard uh, quarter inch camera mount on it. Um, so you could actually uh, fit this camera to any standard camera mount that was quarter inch. You can go back and look in some of my YouTube videos. A lot of the footage that I take is uh, especially leading up to trailheads or in transition between uh, trailheads or campsites comes from this dash cam. It was decent quality. The thing I didn't like about it was that, you know, when you're loop recording or dash cam recording, basically you're, you're recording some footage and then you kind of override it as time goes on. Um, you build up a lot of files and in order to find what's interesting, you got to go through a lot of files. And this camera doesn't have the ability to mark anything special. Um, so uh, basically I would have to come back and, you know, download all the footage and then kind of go through each file. And that was kind of a pain. I don't really have a lot bad to say about it. I just don't know what's happened recently where it started to just render my micro SD cards unusable whatsoever. I can't even reformat them or anything. So out with the old and uh, in with the new. And so what we have here is a Vava dash cam that I purchased. And for my use case, there were a couple of requirements. First, it had to do 1080p. 60 frames and second it had to have the capability to mark interesting things so i wanted to step it up from the old camera and uh and then also it needed to have good quality and that was pretty much it my use case like i said is basically um capturing footage for these types of videos when i'm going to campsites and doing uh, mountain bike rides etc and the standard use case is obviously if you're in a crash, right? Um, providing some type of evidence, uh, perhaps for insurance claim or, or otherwise. This, uh, you can already tell that I've taken this camera out of the box already. So this is definitely not an unboxing. But what I did want to do was give you some initial impressions on this particular camera. I have not used it yet and I plan to come back and do probably a three month or six month kind of review to see how it kind of stacked up to my older camera. Um, but my intent today is, is to help you make a purchasing decision on whether you want to you know, make that impulse buy to buy this Vava dash cam. Uh, this package came with the uh, front facing camera, which is here, which has a built in lithium battery and a rear facing camera, which is here. This was not something that uh, I was shopping for a, a rear facing camera. And I'll tell you, there is a limitation with this in conjunction with the front camera. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but uh, uh, this is the package with the front and rear facing camera. And for reference here, your model number is the VA-VD002. It is powered on the top here. Uh, so this is your windshield mount. Uh, this is the cable for your rear camera here. So this cable for your rear camera plugs in to the top here alongside the power for the forward facing camera. Just looking at the camera, there's a couple of things that concern me already. Uh, this is a 360 degree camera. So it doesn't mean it takes 360 degree video, but it does, it doesn't mean it captures 360 degree video. But if you can see the lens here, if you have this attached to your windshield, you can rotate the camera back. And so therefore you can do like a selfie thing, or if you're trying to capture some video in the rear of the vehicle, then you can just reach around and just spin it around. You can see the mics here on the side and, uh, you know, probably good for a vlogging type scenario with the swivel seems, um, the action in here seems a bit loose. So I'm concerned about with the type of terrain that we go on the, our van and even on our SUV that this may become, this may shake and add some extra vibration to the camera. I'm not sure. It just seems a little bit more flimsy. 
That's one of the things that concerns me. The other thing that concerns me is, you know, this is a nice mount. It's magnetic and uh, it, it sticks to the camera really well, but I'm concerned about uh, this particular suction cup mount. I don't know how well it will stay on the dash. This one worked really well, although it would, uh, if you have temperature changes, it would fall off the dash. I guess we'll, uh, we'll find out if this particular suction is any better. And uh, so you attach it to the dash and then you use this uh, lever here to, uh, to press down to lock it on. All right, the other thing that I don't see that I would wish that this camera had is your standard quarter inch mount like we have on the older camera here. There's no type of mount uh, on, on the base of any of this uh, to, to mount to a standard quarter inch mount. So uh, that's another thing I don't uh, necessarily like about it right away. And it also comes with a, what they call the uh, Vava uh, dash button. And basically what this does is it connects to the camera wirelessly. And if you click it one time, it will take a photo. So if you click and hold it for three seconds, then it will actually start capturing video. Now, this is one of the things that will make this camera nice for me because if I find something interesting, I can actually just hold this down and start recording. That's stored in a separate uh, uh, file system or directory, and those will be easy to go back and uh, grab off of the SD card as interesting captures that I can use in some of my videos. The power cable for the camera comes with a GPS unit with uh, 3M VHB tape on the back, so um, they recommend that you stick this to the windshield or the dash or wherever so that the GPS signal uh, can be captured. And that's if you're using the GPS to actually log your uh, your routes. But this is the standard kind of GPS unit you see that comes with um, your aftermarket radio receiver. So uh, that's included with the power cable. You get plenty of cable to attach the rear camera. So on this little rubber trap door on the side, that's where the SD card is actually accessed. So you've got your micro SD card there and uh, it has a reset button as well. So let's crank up our phone and we'll connect to it and I'll show you some, uh, some of the video and some of the capabilities right here and then we'll move out into the vehicle and start capturing some, some live uh, video feed from actual driving both in the daytime and the nighttime. I'll give this a power up. So we hear the uh, power up sequence there. I'm not gonna go through setup. The setup on these cameras are super easy. Uh, it's all done through the app. Um, I've already got the app loaded here. I'm just gonna connect to it. So basically it's like any other Wi-Fi. You go to your Wi-Fi. It allows you to set all this up in the beginning. So you set your Wi-Fi name and your Wi-Fi password. And once you connect to the Wi-Fi, you can go back into the app and it'll automatically detect the camera. And as you can see here, then we get a live video screen. This is kind of what you get in the app. Um, basically, you have the functionality of the, the uh, little dash button there in the, in the uh, app as well. You can take a snapshot, you can record some video, and it will record a snapshot of video. And then uh, you could look at your GPS route here. So if we go to settings here, there's uh, dash cam settings where it allows you to set your your Wi-Fi name, your password, the loop recording time, if you want to do like a one minute, two minute, or three minute recording time. Video resolution, 1920 by 1080 60 frames. Uh, that is the only 60 frame resolution that it will actually do. If you, um, it will go up to 2560 by 1440. So it'll do 1440p, but it'll do it only at 30 frames per second. Now that's just with the front dash, uh, the front camera connected. Uh, you can set the G sensor sensitivity and you can turn on or off parking mode. Parking mode again is uh, the, once you power down the vehicle, the camera will automatically go into parking mode once it senses that it loses power. It'll take a 15 second emergency video uh, if it detects a shock to the uh, G sensor. So uh, you got a couple options down here to record sound. If you want the LED indicator to be on or off, whether you want the watermarks to be on or off, and uh, if you want the GPS functionality on or off. And you can go through and do all the standard things that you can do with dash cams, which is upgrade to firmware, et cetera, et cetera. And so you have access through your app here to download all of, all of your media. You can also just take the SD card out and load it into your 
your PC or laptop and uh, retrieve uh, your uh, footage there as well. Uh, you've got a GPS signal indicator there. So all of the basic stuff that you get from a dash cam. Now, my older dash cam, this Z Edge, did not have an app, and so you couldn't connect to it. But it does have a live screen on it. And that's the difference between these dash cams. That this particular dash cam doesn't have a, a display on it. But my older dash cam did have a display on it. And I kind of like having the display, but I understand with the, you know, the smartphone app, they expect you to use the phone. So there's you know a lot of features in here I probably wouldn't ever use, but if you're a driver, uh, you might be interested in that uh, travel log or driving journal or things like that. You can go to your album where you see all of your media if you want to access it through your smartphone. All right, so if we go down here to our album, we can see a couple different uh, folders that exist. There's snapshots, there's the loop recording, then there's emergency recording. So the standard recording that you do with a dash cam is going to be in your loop recording library. And to view this, you're going to have to download this on your phone. Or like I said, you can take the SD card out, take it to your PC or computer, copy those files off and then go through it. But what makes it nice is being able to mark those snapshots with either this button or through the app. Those show up under the snapshots uh, category there or library and uh, also the emergency you can also take a look at your emergency recordings here um, that's recordings that um, that uh, either through the g-shock sensor but uh, like say so for example if i take another snapshot i'm just going to point the camera a little bit different place here i'll take a picture All right and so our snapshot shows up there on the app and likewise if we do the video recording All right, it's gonna take uh, some time for that to, uh, to record. And we'll let it finish. And then there's our video that we just took. All right, so that's basically the app and uh, the front dash cam. Now I'm gonna go back and there's something I'm gonna do here. So we're gonna, we're gonna plug in the rear facing dash cam. And this is one of the limitations I think you know, obviously I knew this before I purchased it because I did research, but um, if you're going to think about purchasing this and you want to have a 60 frame front camera and a 60 frame rear facing camera, it's not possible, at least on this firmware. Uh, I don't even know if the hardware is actually um, powerful enough to do that. And that's probably why it has that limitation. But if we plug this reverse camera in here, and it powers off of the main camera so we'll plug it in the top here and we'll go back in our settings here and connect to our camera all right and so you get a couple options in here you get picture in picture you can have the rear cam you can show the, so you, let me point the rear camera something a little bit different there so you can see it. All right, so the rear camera is kind of pointed toward the, the family room there. So you can have picture in picture. All right, so it shows up in a picture in picture there in the top left of the screen. Let me uh, just make this bigger scene. So just top left here. And you can do the front cam only the rear cam only. If you go into the settings here and you take a look at your video resolution, now all of a sudden it's marked us down to 30 frames per second. And the only resolution that you can do with the rear camera connected and but to the front dash camera is 1920 by 1080. So you do 1080p 30 frames, not 60 frames. So I'm not gonna use the rear camera, but this is something that you need to be mindful of. Um, that may affect whether you would want to purchase this particular camera or not. So again, if you're looking for 60 frames from both the rear and the front camera, not going to happen on this particular Vava dash cam model. All right, now how would it record? You have the rear camera connected as well as the front camera. All right, so we got a snapshot there. Let's see what it snapshotted of. Uh, I'm not sure. It snapshotted of the rear and the front. So let's go back our album to our snapshots so it looks like it did take a front picture and a rear picture they're separate and let's do a loop recording or a snapshot record so we'll wait for that to finish 
All right, so that's completed. We'll go back to our album and then to our snapshots and we'll let it write. And so it does record individually uh, the rear camera and the front camera as well on the video. So although in the app you get a picture-in-picture -picture display, uh, in the actual recording you get two separate video files. All right, so you get your individual front video and you get your individual rear video. Just note that um, you're not going to get this picture-in-picture -picture, uh, video, um, picture-in-picture -picture recording. Um, this is just a functionality of the app itself, and that's probably okay for dash cam stuff. You probably want the uh, the full, and then you could through editing, post processing, you can put it in uh, pip if you want to. So, you know, initial impressions: the video quality seems pretty good. I did mention that this camera does have a small built-in battery, so um, it will do the parking. Uh, mode off of its own battery. All right, so now I'm gonna go take the dash cam out to the van and I'm not gonna do the rear dash camera because um, that's a, the 30 frames is just a non-starter for me. So I will take the front uh, camera out to the van and we'll go right around and take some video and then we'll take it back out when it gets darker. All right, here, let's go. Connect to our camera. All right, there we go. So that's about straightforward right there. This tool here, see if we can capture his license plate. It says DTLR with an SA. And we'll back off here. All right, we've got this car just close to the front of us. We'll take another snapshot. Go into some dark shadows here under the bridges and see what we what happens to the sensor here. And then we're gonna come out here. I'm gonna spin the camera around and actually point it toward me and see how well it actually picks up me and the audio for me. So let's see here. Right, right along here. You can see me holding my GoPro and I am driving along here. Go up here. What's up, party people? MTB Plan B here. Even uh, if you wanted it to look out your side window, you could even do that. So I'm just going to ride by some of these cars at the gas station here just to give you an idea about how it would maybe read, you know, off some of these license plates here. I'm just going to cruise by one, two there from the side. All right, so that was just driving around during the daytime. Next test, we'll do a nighttime drive. Right. It is officially dark outside. cars ahead of us here are going to be stopped at the light, so uh, I'm probably 10 feet behind. I'm just going to snap them. All right, uh, cut the lights and a little bit extended time this time. So you should be able to see a bit of me, um, some of that uh, ambient light coming in from the outside. Let's make sure we're being safe here. And let's pull out. All right, so you can see I am holding the GoPro camera in one hand. And, uh, you should be able to see out the window there a little bit. You can see the passenger side over this way. Left. 
All right, so that's going to end the video here. I hope you enjoyed the content. I'm going to come back in three months, six months uh, or so after I've used this dash cam and give you an idea about uh, how it's kind of stacked up as compared to my older camera. Till next time, skill up and ride, band up and go. As always, everybody needs a plan B. Cha-cha for now.